Okay, um, I think we'll get started. Um, so reminders, um, so Isaiah and Morgan, you guys today are um, infecting, disinfecting the surface of the classroom. Um, number three homework still on Tuesday, and then we have exam number one schedule on Friday next week. Okay, so week from now, um, it will cover chapter one, two, uh, and three, okay? So, um, the main focus of your study, um, you, sh you, you want to focus on the homework problems, okay? If you can do all the homework problem by yourself, um, you should be um, also doing good um, in the exam because they are similar problems, okay? <clears throat> all right. So, yep, so last time we talked about the uh, motion with constant oscillation. And then again, this is still in one dimensional motion. So um, if these two conditions are satisfied, one dimensional motion and then constant oscillation, okay, these are the two conditions, then you basically will be looking at those five equations, okay, and then um, uh, rely on them to solve any problems. All right. So uh, today we are going to talk about a particular um, one dimensional constant oscillation motion of free fall. So in this scenario, you will just release the object and then you will only be um, experiencing the gravitational oscillation. So there's oscillation on it, but it's due to the gravity, okay? So if you have anything drop um, down here, say whatever, a ball or a pen or whatever, then it's actually experiencing this uh, gravitational force. Now it had, it was the um, perception that the heavier object drops down quicker than the, the lighter one, but actually it's not the case. That's because the, there's air here, which provides some uh, buoyance force. For the feather, it has larger volume, so you'll have relatively um, significant um, buoyant force on it. But if you can create vacuum environment here nearby the earth, then they will um, arrive at the, um, on the floor, floor at the same time if they are released from the same um, height. Okay, that's because every object on the surface of the earth experience the, gravi the same gravitational oscillation, okay? Um, if you are on the moon, you can do the experiment. So it's vacuum on the moon, then it just goes straight down, okay? The gravity on the moon is about one third, one sixth of what we have here. So we are having pretty much about 10 meters per second square on the earth, okay? Um, so this is what we have on the surface of the earth. So 9.8 uh, meters per second square, okay? So um, if you look at this table, you probably notice that gravity actually varies from location to location, okay? So um, near the equator, you're actually having less of the gravity. That's it because the Earth is not a perfect sphere, okay? So it's kind of um, squeezed like on the poles, okay? So then on the equator, the radius is slightly larger than the, um, the radius on the pole. So, um, yeah, if you go to somewhere nearby equator, your weight is slightly um, less than um, um, other places, okay? But on average, we'll take the average, it's about 9.80, okay? So un unless otherwise specified, we'll use this number throughout the class, okay? Um, so gravity or gravi gravitational oscillation by, by the term itself indicates this is an um, oscillation, so it should be a vector quantity, okay? So the magnitude of it is 9.8. Now the direction of it is always pointing downward, okay? So that's the direction. So wherever you add, it's just pointing towards the center of the earth, okay, or downward, okay? So in that case, if you pick up the upward to be positive direction, then your oscillation is negative, okay? Because it's pointing downward in that case, okay? Only if you pick upward to be positive, then oscillation is negative. So um, often people take a positive to be upward, okay? But you can also do, you can also pick downward to be negative or to be positive, okay? So 
it really adds, it's up to you. It, it can be arbitrary, but once chosen, then you stick to it, okay? All right. So in that case, then, um, if you look at the five equations or motions, if you look at the ones have oscillation, then you will replace the oscillation with negative of G. G is the 9.8, okay? So negative G, that means it's pointing downward. So on those equations, you replace A with minus G or minus 9.8, then you'll have, um, you can rewrite the equation of motions, okay? Um, and then if you are using Y coordinate system instead of X, whenever you encounter X, you replace the um, X with Y, okay? Then um, you have a slightly um, notation on the equations, but they are basically the same equation, okay? All right, so let's take a look on the first um, exercise problem here of the day. So it says the uh, volcano shoots out blobs of molten lava called lava bombs from its summit. A geologist observing the eruption uses a stopwatch to time the flight of a particular lava bomb. So it goes up and then goes right back down. Okay, so um, to have a better visual, we kind of um, um, shift it off side so you can see it actually goes up but go, goes down. But um, um, take a note that it actually goes straight up and then coming downward, okay? It doesn't go on the sideward, okay? This is just for uh, visual uh, clarity there. But it goes up and then right down along one dimensional, okay? Upward and downward. So this is a one dimensional motion. The figure indicates um, that you take the summit at the origin of the um, y-axis and then upward to be the positive, okay? So then your oscillation is negative 9.8 in this case. Um, it says the time it takes to rise and fall back to its launch height is 4.75 seconds. What's the initial speed? How high has, how high above its launch height does the lava bomb go before it velocity turns direction. And then see what's the speed when it returns to the launch level, okay? So I'll have you guys give it a try and then we can take a look on the solution together in a few minutes. So you can go back to the equation of motions here, okay? On the first one here, so whenever you see X, you replace it with Y, and then whenever you see the A, you just replace it with minus 9.8. Okay, that's your oscillation. Let me put the equations over here. So we don't have to go back.
All right, so we realized there are three parts um, on the three questions there. Um, so you guys might be still working on maybe just the last one, but um, half of you guys have some of your responses, okay? So we'll um, just take a look on the solutions together now, okay? You can, you can still submit in your answers if you want, okay? Um, so this one, it says the lava bond goes up and down in 4.5 seconds, okay? So it looks like we are only given one um, number of t equal to 4.75 seconds, right? Um, but in fact, actually, there's a lot more information is indicated in the problem here. So it goes up and then goes back down. So let's assume this is just one straight line. And then it says you want to set it up that this is y direction the origin is at the summit, okay? So then um, some other informations are also um, um, given, or it actually, actually we can um, figure that out is, so if you take the origin at the summit, then your original position is zero, right? So we are now just writing everything um, in, um, that is was x, now it's becoming y, okay? So x not, now we are using y not because we pick y to be the symbol for the position. Now when it returns at a summit, so that's the final position, so that's also zero, right? So initial is at a summit and then our final is also at a summit. So you can see we actually have more information here. Now because you, um, because the lava bomb is being um, um, ejected out, so then it's in the air, it's experiencing the gravitational oscillation, right? So the oscillation, you can also write it down. It would be in minus 9.8, um, zero, if you want the zero, um, meters per second squared, okay? So you have also that piece of information. You have four pieces of information, right? So you are looking for um, in A, you are looking for, so in A, you are looking for um, V0, initial um, velocity, right? Now, you'll be looking at the five equations of motions, equations of motions. Um, you're looking for V0, so you probably um, check the ones that has V0 in it, okay? So, um, I'm going to quickly refer to the five equations here in the class. Um, um, Isaac, you're online, you can refer to the five equations as well, okay? So um, the ones that has X, looks like the first one, the fourth one, and then the last one, okay? In the first one, um, so are we actually looking for V0? So the first one doesn't have it. So the, the third one or the second one, the second one, it doesn't tell you what's the average, okay? Um, and then the final. So you wouldn't use the second one. The third one, you don't the final velocity again. So it looks like the fourth one you are going to use. You, are, you know the final position, initial position, and then the time, and then oscillation. So the V0 is the only unknown in the fourth equation, okay? So you are going to just use the fourth equation then to figure out the V0. So, um, again, you'll be writing y instead of x. So y equals to y naught plus v naught t um, plus one half a t square. Okay, you can do it that way. Uh, or you can write a as minus g, okay, either way. And then you do it minus one half g t square. So zero equal to zero plus v zero times 4.75 seconds plus one half of minus 9.80 meters per second square times 4.75 seconds square, okay? So then you solve for V0 from this equation here, all right? You realize this is zero, so if you can divide everything by 4.75, you get rid of 4.75 on this term and then get rid of the square on that term, okay? Because this is 4.75 times 4.75. Okay, so then V0 or zero equals to V0 minus, you can put the minus sign in front, one half of 9.8 give you 4.90, okay, meters per second square times 4.75 second, okay? So you'll figure that um, this 
4.9 times 4.75 will be your V zero, right? Because the two, um, one, the V zero minus that one is zero. So then V zero will be equal to that. So V zero is equal to 4.90 meters per second square times 4.75 second, okay? That would be 23.275 meters per second. I'll keep three sec thick. It tells you 23.3, okay? I see many of you guys get that one right. All right. So that's A. Um, any questions you guys might have? All right. Now B is asking you when, um, so how high does it go when it turns direction, okay? So you can kind of um, think about like the, the object, the lava bond, it will go up, right? But because initial velocity is going upward, now acceleration is going downward, right? So then the speed will decrease and then at one point it reach zero, right? So you're no longer going up, but it will go down from that point, okay? So that is, um, at that point, then your Y, so you can re redraw the figure here. It goes up, right? Decreasing, and then at the high point, this is your high point. So at that point, you can realize that your velocity will be zero, right? Because it's zero, and then goes down. So at the high point of your flight, your vol vertical velocity is going to be zero, okay? For the free fall problem. Now your V initial, you can use that number because you have solved it, okay? So um, then the other knowns like Y zero equal to zero. Now Y is not equal to zero, right? Y is what you are looking for now. Um, you also know that A is equal to minus 9.80 meters per second squared. In this time, you don't necessarily know the time, okay? Um, but you might figure that it's one half of that, that time. We'll, we'll talk about that probably later, but at this point, assuming we don't know that time, okay? So again, even these informations, four knowns, you are looking for Y, again, you'll be looking into the equation of motions, okay? You might figure out different ways of doing this, okay? Um, but, yeah, it doesn't matter. You can take the first equation um, in, in, um, along with the second one, you can solve it for your y, okay? So the first was like y equals to y zero plus uh, v average times t, okay? So that's the average, all right? You don't take the initial velocity or the final velocity, okay? Now, but um, I'm going to use the, f uh, the, fifth, the, four, the fifth equation, the last one, says v square equal to v zero square plus two a of y minus y zero, okay? So my initial y is zero that goes away, all right? My final v is zero that goes away. So then zero equals to the 23.275 that you got from part a square plus two times negative 9.80 meters per second square times y, right? So then you see y is the only unknown here you can solve for y, okay? So this negative will make this negative, right? So basically, um, you will figure that your y is going to be equal to 23.275 meters per second square divided by two times 9.80 meters per second square, okay? Just the algebra here. Um, it will give you 27.64 meters, roughly, or 27.6 meters, okay? Yeah, or you can use the, the, the V average equal to one half V zero plus V, okay? So V final is zero then it's one half of 23.275 meters per second. And then use the first equation, y equals to y zero plus v average times t, okay? Um, but we don't know this t, 
um, you probably figure that this is half of that, okay? So that's something we'll um, talk about probably later, okay? Um, so this is the height, okay? And then this piece of information, you have to figure that out, okay? Because at the high point, the velocity will be zero, all right? Now let's look at this, the, the, last, the last part here um, is asking you, um, what's the final speed when it comes back to the summit over here, okay? So then you probably will be using the V equals to V0 plus AT equation, right? In this equation, you know V0, which you saw in part A, and then T is the 4.75. So this will be 23.275 minus, because A is minus 9.8, right? This is meters per second times 4.75 seconds, okay? So this will tell you this is minus 23.275 meters per second. All right, this gives you the velocity, okay? If you are looking for speed, then it's the magnitude of this guy, okay? Just, just take the magnitude of it, okay? So 23.275 to be your speed, or 23.3, .3, okay? So, oops. All right. <clears throat> so you can see that your speed, when it goes back to the original height, is the same as your initial speed, okay? So this is for the object that, has, that is experiencing gravitational oscillation, okay? That's one of the a unique um, character here, okay? So um, now we have figured this out. So later on, when you are solving a problem like this, you can directly apply that piece of information, okay? So when it goes back to the original height, um, the speed is the same. Direction is, um, the direction is in opposite direction, but the speed is the same, okay? So let me pull this back. All right, so, so two pieces of information you can apply um, from this point on because we learn it now from this problem, okay? So at the highest of the flight, the speed of the bond will reach zero, okay? It applies also to if you throw anything else upward, okay? So then at the height, the vertical, spe vertical speed will be zero, okay? Um, the speed is the same at the same level, okay? So over here, it's the same. Now, if you are at some point over here and there, if they are at the same level, um, they should be also the same, okay? Um, sorry, that I, think I didn't put that on the PowerPoint slide, okay? So, All right, so at the summit, when it's, it is first uh, being erupted and then comes back, the speed is the same. And, and in other levels, okay, if they are the same height, then you can also expect the speed to be the same, okay? Just different numbers, okay? <clears throat> um, also, I wanted to talk about the time it takes from here to reach to the highest point, okay? So um, we know that from here is 23.275 at here is zero, okay? So then we can use the third equation here quickly to check on the time, all right? If you do that, you will figure that the time is exactly one half of this guy, okay? So you can have a quick check on that. You guys can do that. Um, just use the first third, third equation here. The final velocity being zero, initial is 23.275, and then use the oscillation as negative 9.8 and then solve for t, okay, you can, you can see that, you can check your time. 
and now it's going to be half, okay, of 4.75. So that put uh, another piece of information for a, a, if you saw up and up and down, okay? So if it comes back down at the original height, then the time it takes to reach to the highest point is half of the whole journey, okay? <clears throat> All right. Um, we will take a look on a second exercise problem here. Okay, I will give you guys a few minutes again to work on this, and then we can take a look at the solution together. Okay. So you throw up a ball with the initial speed, velocity. Now this one, this time this is given. It says it's past a tree branch on the way up at the height of 7.0 meters. How much additional time Elapsed before the ball passes the tree branch on the way back.
Okay, so um, I think we can take a look at this together, okay? Um, so if you have balls thrown up, um, so then again, this is a free fall problem. The ball is just experiencing the oscillation as gravitational oscillation, okay? You can also pick up the upward to be positive, but you can say this is X, okay? It's up to you. Um, by convention, people would like to say Y to be uh, vertical to be Y, but you can still say this is X, okay? So it doesn't matter. I'm going to just with, I'm going to stick with Y as the vertical, okay? Um, so you're asking, uh, you're asked to find the time it takes from this branch upward and then coming back down here, right? So um, you may want to find out like what's the velocity at this point, right? And then at this point, okay? So if you can find out that velocity, so this is going upward, right? And then this is going downward. So they are at the same height. So this will be part, part will be negative, right? Of this guy. So they will be negative of V. So if you can just figure out this guy, then um, you can use that one to calculate out the, the, the time T, okay? So you can do it this way. Um, because this is seven meters from here to here, this is your final Y is equal to seven meters for this part of the journey. And then start with y equal to y zero equal to zero. Okay, so then you probably can use the last equation that says v square equal to v zero square um, plus two a. Now I'm going to just do minus two g because g a is equal to minus g. Okay, y minus y zero. So then this goes to zero, and this. So this is what we are looking for. V square equals to fifteen square minus two times 9.8, okay, times the y only seven meters, okay? Now you can solve for this guy. You can do square root of it to get the um, v, okay? You can do it that way. Um, I actually didn't do it that way, but um, if you guys can um, do it that way and then tell me what number you get from this, I can have a quick check as well. So it's going to be square root of 15 square minus two times 9.8 times seven, 9.37, okay? So that's what we, you would have, 9.37 meters per second for it's going upward, okay? So then when it comes back at this same height, it should be, so then you can take this as your V1, okay? Um, I'm going to just say this is V1. So then when, I, when the ball comes back here as V2, then that would be minus 9.37, okay? By what we learned from the previous problem, if it's coming back at the same height, it will be having the same speed, but just negative, okay? Going downward. So then to figure out the time here, you'll just use V2 equals to V1 minus gt, okay? So then that will give you the time t. Um, so let's see. So in this case, I will move this guy to the other side of the equation. So that gives me gt equals to v1, and then this guy to the other minus v2. So t then will be v1 minus v2 over g, okay? So 9.37 meters per second minus minus 9.37 meters per second divided by the 9.80, okay? So then I should be having about 1.916 second, okay? Or 1.92 second, okay? You can do it this way. Or you can um, just say, okay, so it's starting from here. All right, so then when it goes up, this is the final position. I can set the equation up. I can use the, um, the fourth equation, which says y equals to y0 um, plus v0 t minus one half gt square. So in this equation, then this would be the seven meters, right? This would be the zero. This guy would be the 15 meters per second. Then T, it's what we are looking for. This is 
meters per second, okay? So this would be a quadratic equation, right? Um, you should expect two solutions for the T because it's a quadratic equation, right? So then um, simply that will just tell you that then for the two times I get from this equation, it should be referring to the first time it's passing through the branch and the second time when it comes back at this same height, okay? So then you can get two t's, then you will just take the difference of the two t's. It will tell you um, the, um, the time it takes to go up and then coming back at that seven, okay? So either way, this is another way of doing it. I'm going to just um, put the numbers on the other side of the page, okay? So, seven here, zero here, 15, and then one half times four, nine, uh, 9 8, that will give you um, 4.9, okay? So on the, the other page here, I'm going to just leave out the units, okay? So I will have just seven equals to zero plus 15t minus 4.9t squared, all right? So then I can, I can move this, these two terms to the other side of the equation, it becomes, so, positive, negative becomes positive, and positive becomes negative, plus seven equal to zero, right? So I'll be then solving for this quadratic equation, okay? It's going to tell me that T then equals two. For a quadratic equation, um, the solution is equal to minus B plus minus square root of B squared um, minus four AC over my uh, over 2a okay so my a is this is my a minus 15 is my b c is 7. so then minus of b minus of minus 15 becomes positive my plus minus square root of minus 15 square plus or minus 4 times a times c divide by 2a, okay? So the plus will give me t2 equal to 2.49 second. The minus will give me t1 equals to 0 0.574 seconds, okay? So then the time will be t2 minus t1, okay? That gives me 2.49 minus 0 0.574, um, 1.916 second, okay? Should be the same number or close enough, okay? Because there's probably some rounding issues, um, then you are slightly off from the number, okay? Any questions you, you guys might have? All right. Now, another scenario um, would be, so we are, we are throwing this object upward and then that's above the, um, the reference of origin um, level, okay? So sometimes you may be throwing, um, say you may be taking this as your Y zero, but you are throwing stuff, say, off a cliff and then coming back downward, okay? Hit this. So then you are starting from this point, okay? So if you are looking for, you can set up the equation like the, uh, what we did here, similar here. And then you might be looking for the time it takes to hit the, the button here. So in that case, um, you'll get two T's. One T is like the going upward, one is going downward at the same level, okay? So then one T is probably going to be negative. That means this guy here, okay? You are actually starting from here as your t zero, so then this is t negative, okay? So you'll just take the positive t in that case, okay? If the problem is asking what time it takes um, to reach the, the ground here, okay? Then you'll take the positive number, just forget about the negative, okay? Um, I believe there's one um, problem in the next homework assignment about that, okay? Maybe, I think it's dropping off maybe a balloon. Um, somewhere in the air, hot air balloon, okay? But it's like less scenario, okay? <laughs> Questions for you guys?
Okay. So if not, then we'll be talking about the um, next section here um, to find velocity and displacement from oscillation, okay? So sometimes the problem may be just giving you the information about the oscillation of the object, okay? Uh, from definition, the oscillation is time derivative Keep forgetting the camera. So from the definition, time derivative of your velocity should give you oscillation, all right? So then if you are giving oscillation, then you can actually do integration of both sides of the equation, okay? So then on the left-hand side, um, you are doing integration of it with respect to dt, then it will give you uh, velocity, okay? So um, then, on this side, you can also you should also do the integration, okay? So then, the velocity then will be equal to oscillation um, integration of oscillation uh, with dt, okay? Plus a certain constant number, okay? So if you are given the original condition, then you should be able to figure out this um, uh, constant number, okay? So this is how you can get um, velocity from oscillation information, okay? Um, once you have that, you can further actually um, solve for the uh, position as a function of time, okay? Because if you do time derivative for position, it gives you velocity. Then just do integration on both sides, we will tell you that on left-hand side, you'll have just the position as a function of time t, and that is equal to integration of velocity with respect to dt, okay? and plus a constant number, again, uh, could be, it should be a different constant number. But if you are given the initial condition, then you should be able to solve for this guy, okay? All right. Um, special case here is if you have a constant oscillation motion, okay? And then if you are given initially, the velocity is at a certain number V initial, okay, so then, you can do integration of the previous equation um, on the oscillation. Um, so we may have to go back one slide here. So when you do um, integration of this guy, so if A is constant, constant is not a function of time t, all right? Then if you do integration of a constant with dt, then you simply multiply that constant by t, okay? So then V is equal to at plus a constant number, which will be your initial velocity, okay? So then V is equal to initial velocity plus A times T, okay? And then um, if you are given the initial position is X naught, then you can do integration of your VT here. This is VT plus a C2, okay? So then um, if you are doing it that way, this is constant. So then V zero T, if you do integration, okay? There's T here. So then you raise the power of T to two, but um, there's one half, okay, comes down here, all right? So then one half AT square plus C zero or C two. Now, given that when X, when T is equal to zero, you have initial X naught, so then, um, plug in t equal to zero here, get rid of this, get rid of that. So then C2 is equal to x now, okay? So overall, then you, 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 you kind of recover this equation for constant oscillation motion, okay? So this is how you can apply integrations to get um, position and then velocity information, okay? Um, we will take a look on one example here. Uh, maybe next time, okay? So um, if you guys um, um, forget the integrals, I think it's a good time for you to review 
on over the weekend. Okay, so just big basic integrals. Okay, then um, you should be able to follow with the integration next time. Okay, so I think we'll stop here for today and then come back on Monday. Okay.